I first saw him in 64 here against St George, a game we lost. And um, I loved in, the, in his autobiography, he tells the story of having been sent off 18 times. I think that's more than Sam. Um, 18 times, there were different days in those days, but I, the story I love most of all is, I think Bernie, Bernie Purcell's son is up here. Bernie was the coach of Souths back in the uh, 60s. And um, so they were playing out at Wests, and as Sats told the story. And um, uh, Bernie hung behind there as coaches did then to lock up the dressing room as the players ran out, led by Sats. And he came out having locked up the dressing room, came out to his spot alongside the, the sideline, and Sats was running off, and he thought he'd forgotten his mouth guard. He said, what have you forgotten, Sats? He said, no, I'm off. I've been set off. A minute, a minute into the game and Sats was set off, but a remarkable bloke, but times were different. Hell of a player. Well, let's bring up um, the best club CEO in rugby league, in fact, any kind of football, Blake Solly. Thank you very much, Ray, and thank you for um, taking the role of MC today. I know uh, you're, you've seen much of South Sydney's success and you saw a lot of John, so it means a lot to us to have you MC today. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners and pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. On behalf of our ownership group, Russell, Mike and James, our board led by Chairman Nick Pappas, our members and the entire club, I'm honoured and humbled to be asked to say a few words about John and his immense contribution to the Rabbitohs. Today we mourn the passing of a Rabbitohs and rugby league legend in John, but also celebrate a life lived to the fullest and a legacy without peer at South Sydney. I want to welcome and pay my respects to the Sattler family led by Barbara and Scott. It's been a privilege to see the tremendous strength in your family over recent weeks and I want to thank you for giving us and our members and our fans this opportunity to celebrate John here today. I'd also like to welcome the teammates of John and their families in attendance, in particular to George Piggins. I know, George, your return to the club was something that John hoped for and to see you now as a life member here at training and at games would be something that John would have been tremendously happy about. Welcome to all those teammates. Thank you. Um, unfortunately, I was too young to see John play live. Uh, I often felt like I feel like I did because I grew up in a household where his name was and the stories of his deeds on and off the field were held sacred. My father and grandfather had one true passion in life and that was the South Sydney Rabbitohs. And like every fan who saw that golden era when John captained the team, they adored, admired and at times beatified John. There were few conversations about South in our house that didn't refer to John or didn't finish with a story about what they'd seen John do on the field. And in thinking about John for today's memorial, memorial, the words that they used to describe him as a kid came rushing back. On the field, he was uncompromising. He was brave, he was unbreakable. A winner, a leader, a captain. He was courageous, he had physical and mental toughness, and he was tenacious. They're almost the same words that everyone's used about John since his passing weeks ago. Simply, John's one of the greatest leaders the club's ever had. Six grand finals, captaining the team in five of them, and leading the club to four premierships. He only ever played first grade at this club and he captained his country and his state. The 1970 grand final remains rugby league folklore. Much of the story doesn't need to be repeated today. We all know the moments from the game and the way John inspired the team to a premiership. I think it was Russell who probably said it best when he said that even today, any evidence of true courage on the rugby league field is immediately measured on the Sattler scale. In a sport as tough and challenging as rugby league, for the, Scatler, for the Sattler scale to be the yardstick 50 years on says it all about John's approach to the game, his life and his character. During the half time he refused treatment and insisted he continue playing. He said to his teammates, the next bloke who tries to cut me out of the play is in trouble, leading and inspire his team to that premiership win. I spoke to Bobby yesterday, his great friend Bobby McCarthy, and asked him what he loved most about John. Some of it's captured up there uh, in the video with the Jekyll and Hyde comment, but he loved the transformation. John in his suit coming to games, John on the field, tough, uncompromising. He wanted to test everyone. He wanted to test the opponents mostly. He wanted to test his teammates, sometimes the referee, and he wanted to test them to get that win. But off it, he would walk across, grab his suit, into the leagues club across the road, and talk to the elderly women about their cats and dogs. And that brings me back to the words that my parents and my grandfather used to use about John off the field. He was a gentleman. He was humble. He was generous. He was principled, honest, caring, curious and respect. I've spoken to so many people in recent weeks who have their own story about John off the field. 
Dr Jimmy LaHood, who as a child would regularly attend training here at Redfern, watching his hero, heroes go about their preparation for the weekend's game. Jimmy recounts how John would stand at the fence asking him how his schoolwork was going, what subject he liked and how his marks were. Jimmy swears John was more interested in his schooling than Jimmy was. Jimmy also says it wouldn't have been without John's interest in his schooling, Jimmy probably wouldn't be a doctor either. He was that passionate about people. Everyone who met John had a similar story. When you were in John's company, he had an innate gift for making you feel that you were special, when really the special person in the conversation was John. There are too many stories about John's compassion and his generosity and his care away from the field to mention. But it's hard to pick one from that treasure trove. But if there was one, it was just before the grand final, three weeks before the grand final on 30 August 1970. John was standing at the Ginali station talking to one of the members of the club committee when he heard people cry, stop the train, stop the train. He looked towards the platform, saw a suitcase perched at the edge and rushed over to see an elderly man trapped down on the tracks unable to move. Knowing the man must have fainted, John jumped down, grabbed him, threw him back on the platform before a train arrived less than a minute later. Without John's act of bravery, he would have been killed in front of hundreds of Sydney shoppers at the station that day. Two events, three weeks apart, and in some ways defined John. His character, his courage, his care. Why he was such a hero to so many. If anyone epitomises the true spirit of the South Sydney Rabbitohs, it's John. He bled red and green. He would do anything for his teammates. He never took a backward step. He always led from the front. He was loved by everyone connected with the Rabbitohs, whether it was one of his former teammates who he led to Premiership glory, or the man in the street who loved South Sydney just as much as he did. He was empathetic off the field, and he truly represented everything that we want the Rabbitohs to be. John's contribution and values are reflected in the work of our players and our staff every day. Everyone at the Rabbitohs wants to honour his legacy and respect the heritage he helped to create. When I look at our team today and their exploits on and off the field, Cameron Murray is a captain of our club at the same age as John was. Campbell Graham playing last year's final series with fractured ribs all the way through three games. Players like Cody Walker, Latrell Mitchell, Shaq Mitchell, Ben Lovett, who left their small towns in the bush to come to Sydney to try and make their way in a game as brutal as rugby league and build a career and a family here. Watching our players interact with fans here at Redfern or Maroubra, or the respect they showed Chief of Navy Mark Hammond at training on Wednesday. And finally, their tenacity last night. Never giving in, playing to win across both teams and securing the winning in the last minutes. They were the values of John's life and career and the values in the culture of our club today. Finally, John's well-known favourite saying was, I play to win, everyone knows that. It was on our jersey in round four and there is nothing more South Sydney Rabbitohs than that. John always held the Rabbitohs dear to his heart and everyone here at the Rabbitohs held John dear to theirs. He was one of the greatest ever Rabbitohs and his legacy and contribution to our club will live on forever. Thank you. There you go. See, Sam, that's in store for you. They're going to write a song about yours one of these days too. Um, let me endorse what, uh, what Blake said earlier as well. Um, as a very proud Camilleroy man, um, I earlier had written here, I wanted to acknowledge the traditional owners of this land, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. I pay my deep respects to all of them and every other Indigenous person here today. All right, um, we've got some great people here and we're very honoured to have them. We're honoured to have uh, be joined by the National Rugby League CEO, Andrew Abdo. Would you please welcome Andrew? <clears throat> Good morning. I acknowledge the traditional owners of the land in which we gather here today, pay my respects to elders past and present. On behalf of the Australian Rugby League Commission and Chairman Peter Valandis and everyone in the NRL, it's an honour to pay my respects and to celebrate the contribution of John William Sattler here today. I also pay my respects to the Sattler family, of course particularly to Barbara and Scott and to all family and friends gathered here today. I also acknowledge the South Sydney Rabbitohs Club, Chairman Nick Pappas, the owners, the directors, CEO Blake Solly, the entire South Sydney family. This is a great club with great traditions. Thank you very much for the opportunity to say a few words today as the rugby league community celebrates the life of a legend. When I arrived in Australia, the first match I attended was between the Rabbitohs and the Bulldogs. It was the traditional Easter Sunday, Friday match. I immediately fell in love 
with the game. The community, and I felt part of it. I felt part of Australia. I developed a deep admiration for rugby league after witnessing those 80 minutes. Not just for what I saw on the field, but the passion and the community spirit in the stands. The history that was spoken about with so much pride by so many people. Rugby league is a game of tribes and a game of heroes. Inside those tribes are the characters of the game. Those that entertain us and those that provide great service to the game. There is no better example of a tribal community than the South Sydney Rabbitohs. And there is no greater example of a hero than John Sattler. I'm not a deeply religious person, but I do believe that we have one life. And I often think about how you would measure the success of your life when the time is up. For me, it's three things. Who are your people? Relationships with families and friends. What were your passions? What impact did you have? What dent did you make in the universe? And finally, what was your purpose? And did you follow it with integrity? People, passions, and purpose. Although I never had the honor of meeting John personally or seeing him play live, such was his impact on the game that the many people that I've spoken to have given me a deep sense of his achievements on all three of these measures. He loved his family and his friends, and they loved him. He embodied mateship. His passion for football and the South Sydney Rabbitohs, he was brave and bold when the moment mattered most. And his purpose was clear. He loved playing hard and winning. He had competitive spirit and the will to win. But most of all, he had integrity, loyalty, humility, and compassion off the field. John Sattler, one of the toughest to play the game on the field, but one of the most humble and softly spoken of it. In our 115 year history, there have been over 10,000 rugby league players played first class level. But only 46 have played more than 300 games. That's less than half a percent. John played 346 first class games. Six grand finals in the Cardinal at Myrtle. 65, 67, 69, sorry, 68, 69, 70, and 71. Just consider that for a moment. Six grand finals. Only the very best can reach that summit. And John did it all with South Sydney. Captaining the team to four premierships, 67, 68, 70, and 71. He led a golden era for this club. It's impossible to stand here at Redfern Oval and not be touched by the history of this great club and John Sattler stands at the gates with the best of them, alongside the greatest to have worn the jersey. Clive Churchill, Bob McCarthy, Harold Horder, and Ron Coote. It's impossible not to stand here and consider the reverence that this grass has, the grandstand, the fans, everyone holds in reverence the contribution that John has made. And when you hear about the history of South Sydney, it's impossible not to understand the significance that John played in that role. One story will live on as we know, and we've just heard the song of. He played through the 1970 grand final with the jaw broken in three places. Now that jaw would go on to be as famous as John himself, as we heard in the song. But as famous as that story is, it will never be the true and whole reflection of John the man. John the player in some sense, but not John the man. He arrived at the club from Kurikuri in 1963 with a, rep with a reputation, well, how could you put it politely? Let's just say he was a fairly difficult fellow to deal with on the football field. Sure enough, he was sent off three times in that first season in the big smoke. Now, I'm not sure how much actual game time John would be enjoying under the current judiciary system. <laughs> but having said that, his elevation to captain in 1967 was a very interesting move. John quickly developed into one of the game's most inspiring leaders, but he also had a, a level of self-awareness and maturity and ambition. He once famously said, 
I had a reputation, having been given a few holidays by the judiciary, and I had the habit of exploding every time something went wrong. That's where the captaincy really helped me. Instead of always acting on impulse, I'd stop and think for a while and take a much calmer approach. It was a responsibility that I grew to enjoy. It's a really interesting observation that he made. And based on that assessment, there might be a few characters playing in the NRL in 2023 who could do with being appointed captain. At the time of John's passing, our chairman Peter Verandes observed, the tales of his toughness were quite extraordinary, but they were also at odds with his nature off the field. He was a true gentleman. There was certainly a view published in an old Souths article in the mid-1960s, which I read. It said, Sats is the ideal team man. Off the field, he is the most courteous, has a happy disposition and great manners. It is little wonder, therefore, that he was well liked not only by his teammates, but by the football club in general. Off the field, John was always giving his time to fans and loyal servants of the game. I've been, I've been told by those closest to him that in the early stages of his career, he used to give his playing shorts and his socks to the gentleman who worked at the Players' Gate here at Redfern Oval. That was John, selflessly South Sydney. After his first grand final success in 1967, Sata was selected to tour with the Kangaroos, but he dislocated his elbow and that cost him the chance of playing in the test. But he went on to make his test debut against New Zealand in 69 as captain. Only six players in 100 years have captained Australia on their test debut. He also captained Australia against Great Britain in the second test of the 1970 Ashes series at the SCG. In 2008, John was inducted into the NRL Hall of Fame and was named in the list of Australia's 100 greatest players. This is where his legacy will forever be recognised in our history. In these grandstands and in others, on this field and on others, the stories of John will continue to be told. His legacy as a gentleman and a giant of the sport will live forever. John, you were loved by people. You lived your life with passion and you defined your purpose. May the wind always be at your back. The true believers never mention 1969. We don't mention that year at all. A grand final of the one that got away. All right, it's terribly sad to think of John's passing. We're here to celebrate. Uh, it was a glorious, incredibly successful and fulfilling life. Uh, helped as always by his family and uh, so many of the good, good friends who are here today. In what we all know can be a sometimes bitchy sport uh, with uh, a lot of backbiting and uh, criticism of the stars, especially today with social media. I don't think any of us ever heard a single negative word about John Sattler. Uh, that's the, the mark of the man, it's quite incredible. So let's hear now from the man John called probably his greatest success story, his son, Scott Sattler. Thanks, Ray. Uh, I just want to thank everyone, rugby league fans and South fans, meant so much to Dad. And I think anyone who knew him would tell you how giving he was with his time. We keep hearing the, the testimonials over the last few months about uh, how special he was to people and how positive he was with the influence that he had on people. Uh, this club, its fans and the ground become like a second family to Dad when he made the trek to South in 1963 as a, as a young man from Curry Curry, who was taken in by the Rabbitoh faithful and he was forever grateful for that. We heard so many stories growing up about this great ground as kids, how visiting teams hated coming here. Reggie the Rabbit, who used to live underneath the grandstand. Uh, Bernie Purcell, he said, uh, when he used to coach the side before Clive, never drove anywhere, he said, Scott. He said, so he'd just walk off into the darkness. He said, it's all right, he'd get home. Someone will pick him up and drop him wherever he needs to go. Uh, Clive Churchill, pulling up in his taxi, coaching this star-studded side, and then getting back in his tux taxi to go and finish his shift. This ground and this club served as the perfect backdrop that took a fiery young bush kid and turned him into a proud leader of this community. In 1996, after hearing so many great stories about this ground, and South had moved over to what is now Allianz Stadium in 1988, I got the opportunity to play here in 1996 versus the Bunnies on a return to Redfern game. Dad attended because he was so excited that I was going to spend some time on this, this ground he called home. And he said to me straight away, what shed are you in? 
I said, oh, you go to the end of the tunnel, turn left. He said, that was used to be the home shed. Why is it the away shed? And I was informed last night by Darren Brown, former player, that, that uh, Jack Gibson made that change. And he said, well, if you go to the furthest hook on the far left, that was my hook for the entire time I was at the club. So I found the hook, I walked up the tunnel, and I sat, stood at the end of the tunnel in 1996 watching the game before and a lady was sitting to my right in the grandstand who looked like she'd been supporting the club in the 50s and 60s and she was knitting. And she looked up at me and she said, what's your name? I said, Scott. And she said, what's your last name? I said, Sattler. And she said, I bet you're not as good as your dad. <laughs> I said, probably not. Anyway, the game finished. We got beaten by the bunnies. I wasn't too upset about that whenever we beat South and wherever I was playing. I was walking off and she was still knitting. She was halfway through locked look like a, some sort of baby cardigan. I remember it quite vividly. And she didn't actually look up, but she sensed I was walking off and she yelled out, Oi. And I looked down and I said, How are you? She goes, I told you you were shit. <laughs> and that's what's so amazing about the Bunnies fans. That they'd even sledge one of their favourite players' sons, even if he played for an opposing side. That day still stands as one of my proudest days, to be quite honest, that I got to play here and hang my jersey on his hook. I was sitting with Dad three years ago. And we spoke about the club. And Redfern Oval. His memory wasn't as vivid in, in relation to general details, but his recollection, recollection of the Rabbitoh days were always clear when he talk about Eric Sims training in bare feet and how fast Michael, Michael Cleary was, but they called him Michelle. How great the great Paul Sait was and Pittard and Bobby Grant who, and his evil eyes. Ron Coots, nicknamed Solid because he'd walk around the, grand, grand, uh, the dressing sheds without his shirt on saying, look how solid I am. <laughs> Bobby McCarthy, how great Bobby was, he said. One of the greatest back rolls we'll ever see. And then he went on to everyone, Gary Stevens, the great tackle technique, and Lurch, oh, my great mate Lurch. And there was Elwin, Elwin Ward Walters, and of course George Piggins, the godfather of the club. And he went on and on about the great Clive Churchill and his love for Bernie Purcell. He loved the 2014 grand final. It was like another coming of Dad to see South Sydney in the grand final. And for him to be able to attend that grand final alongside George, who hadn't been back to a game for many years, it was a proud day for Dad. He loved the Burgess boys, all four of them. He said the great Yorkshire manners that they have is what South Sydney represents and how you should respect everyone. He loved Michael Maguire and the success that both he and his coaching staff brought back to the club. He would have loved Jason Demetrio and his personality and personally knowing JD, I just know he would have loved Dad and Dad would have loved him if he got to spend more time with him as well great personalities of the club and that's what he was proud about that they were always there for the community and the people and I was sitting with him there three years ago and we spoke about Redfern Oval and as I said he wasn't that vivid with a lot of his general details but it, with South Sydney he could talk for hours and that's what I miss his memories were really ingrained and when it came to anything to do with this club and it's great memories he said to me can you remember we spoke years ago that one day whenever we go where you'd like your ashes spread? I said, yeah. And he said, I'd love to have some, some of my ashes spread on Redfern one day if they would let me. Well, they've let you, Dad, and that's why we're here today, to ensure that you always stay part of this ground. Thank you for the club, everyone, from Nick Pappas, Blake, the playing group, the coaching staff, uh, all, the, all the officials as well and all the departments. Shannon Donato, thank you very much for your communication uh, throughout the last month and most notably the community and the fans, all rugby league fans, but mostly South Sydney fans. It played a huge part in my dad's life. Um, I just wanted to say, you know, celebrating his life over the last month has been hard and difficult, but it's also been really exciting about the, uh, the positive reflection that he's, that he's had on, on everyone that he always came in contact with. And if I could leave you with this, he always thought about others before himself. And it looks as though that he continued with that in his passing. He loved this club so much that he coincidentally passed away in 2023, the Chinese year of the rabbit. Maybe things are 
bigger things that are coming in October. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ryan. Yep. Thank you, mate. Thanks, Scotty, very much indeed. I think he probably would have liked that, don't you? Yes. You mentioned the uh, scattering the ashes. What you're going to keep some for the new home? Tell us. Yeah, uh, Mark Ellison, great South Sydney player and a very good friend of the family. He uh, he mentioned it a few weeks ago, and I, and I only thought about it a few days ago. I, I remembered that he asked me, and I thought that he might have been apprehensive about asking again, how because of how emotional the situation is. But he mentioned that could we keep some of the ashes for the. Uh, for the new facility, which I think, you know, we'd love nothing more than that as a family to be able to keep some here. Um, this is a spiritual home here and obviously we'd like to spread some here that remain part of history and, and the future as well. But I think it's only uh, fitting that we have a place over there as well. Right. And again, I guess, um, I can't imagine these players showing more respect than turning up today after a brutal game last night. To, you'd like them to be part of the spread of the ashes if Absolutely, the boys will yeah. join you? Yep. Please tell us. Yeah, absolutely. Love the uh, if the boys and I think if the staff here are going to guide the boys over to near the, the, the goalposts here. And I, I think it's also fitting that if I could ask uh, Bob and Ron and also George if they all three could come down. I, they knew Dad longer than me, so <laughs> I think uh, they should play a part in, in ensuring that he's uh, departed correctly. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ray. Thanks, Bob. Thank you, mate. Again, thanks to Scott Sadler. So... Stay with us, folks. This will be a highly emotional ceremony we're going to have here of the, the current uh, South Sydney team joining Scott and, uh, and three of our greatest legends across near the goalpost, and uh, we'll s s uh, scatter some of those precious ashes. And the captain's declared it a calling We're drinking our way through the night and we're having the time of our lives. Throw the empties away, start again. For the boys of South Sydney are together. We'll drink till the dawn breaks again. And may the session of South Sydney last forever. Oh, we never stagger, we never fall. We sober up on pure alcohol While our wild sons go marching Up to the Buffalo And we'll guzzle, guzzle, guzzle And we'll tip it down our muzzle And sing our theater loud and clear More beer And we'll drink all night until we're very tired of the shades of wherever we are. 